it's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Uh, a few months ago, I had invited you to come along and um, uh, help us build a garden. And uh, you had done that. And at the end of that show, um, we had closed the show with a song by a band called uh, Planet Percussion. And all through the country, I've had uh, a lot of um, comments. And so the friends wanted to know more about the people of Planet uh, Percussion. And so uh, it just so happened they had some free time, and um, some of them, not all of them. And so we thought, well, OK, uh, we're going to uh, uh, put this together today. Now, for, those, for the friends that wonder if I have green hair or blue hair, you're absolutely right, I do. So you're not seeing things, but then this is the person of high strangeness show here. So without further delay, I'm going to introduce you to at least uh, a couple of uh, the band members. And I'm going to start with Jay. Um, hi, Jay. I can't say your last name. Cecilia. Cecilia. And uh, you're the director of the band? I'm the director. Mm -hmm. And then play it for me, please. She. OK. And so better that than for me to mess it all up. And you, I've never met you before at all. And so Jay pulled you out of the hat, uh, out of the drum. <laughs> yes. So that was great. Thank you for coming. It's good to be here. Um, now, for the friends in the Olympia area, you're really kind of familiar with the band because every time we turn around, we run into them at the lake fair and the farmer's market and, and point defiance and almost um, on a regular basis, you hear them play on, uh, on the TV station. And so what we thought, it, during our show, you're going to hear them again. But in the meantime, uh, Jay had prepared a, a it's a three minute, yeah, three minutes. A promo that he had put together, and that's used for businesses, am I correct? That's basically used uh, for a promo <coughs> and, and kind of give everybody the spirit of how long and how far we came. Okay, and, and so what I thought we would do when, we, when we're ready with, without the audio, please, uh, we'll show you some different things that the band has done. and the years, um, yes. And maybe you could give us a real quick, because it's only three minutes, uh, where it was taken place of when it comes, when okay. it's not here yet. Okay. And then later we will, here we go. Um, that's a piece that you wrote now? This is a piece, I, yes, I did. Um, this is called. Uh, well, it says Beats from the Caribbean. Oh, mix yes. With These are some of the. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we're based on what the band is really about, mm -hmm. the mission of the band. Yeah. Uh, so we decided to put these graphic words in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was really nice the way you had, you know, tried to introduce that. And so, and so here, so here we are. And then uh, we'll, we'll briefly describe that. And then after that, we'll do some other things here. And go right ahead. Well, some of these shots uh, we have taken, uh, as you can see, some are from the Capitol Theater we have performed mm -hmm. during the procession time, March 1st. A uh, few of them are, are doing arts walk at Point Defiance mm -hmm. Zoo. You will see some of the latest clips, which will be taken from Lake Fair. Mm -hmm. And clips that we did at the farmer's market. Uh, I understand that's over a uh, several year period. Several, two year period <coughs> we have done this. Mm -hmm. And we only been doing this, this band's only been together for, I mean, mm -hmm. two years. We've been, of course, four years with the procession, but two years doing this. This is the oh, capital, so that's point defiance right that's, there. Yeah, that's the clip that we showed on, on our show that started yeah. the request mm -hmm. here. And then, uh, but you, it's not always just out, outside performances either. No, and and would you be nice enough to, to give this us this one? This is the lake. For, this is our newest. It's called, it's called the Bamboo Rhythm. Mm -hmm. First time we had ever debuted and at Lake Fair. It turned out really well. Mm -hmm. People seem to really enjoy this one. This is at Arts Walk last year uh, for the Procession Species. We done a uh, show right there by the, uh, the White Building on, uh, mm -hmm. on the fourth. Is that still there? Yeah, that's still there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We had that earthquake, so some of the buildings aren't there anymore, so we're just checking. This is taken at the Farmer's Market, mm -hmm. our latest show. Yeah. And I think it's going to be the Farmer's Market one that uh, We'll show later now. Mm -hmm. Now this is a zoo uh, at Point Defiance in mm -hmm. Tacoma uh, for the arts walk. Right after the procession, we did this show. 
and give them and go back to the market. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, the the lady that's dancing for your belly dancer couldn't come today. Maria, yes. But, yeah. So I think what we want to do is uh, kind of go right down the line and you know, just visit a little bit and see who everybody is. Um, oh, hey, there's some more. Oh, is that? This is Lake Fair also. Oh, there's Lake Fair already? Yeah. Okay, so we get some audio on that. Is it the end of the clip? Uh, well, actually, you still got a few more clips to go. Before okay, so we'll it. just wait. Yeah. And I guess we're going to go back to the farmer's market. No, that's the actual, uh, that's the actual show. So yeah. uh, while we're talking, you just enjoy um, that particular concert. I'm going to start with you because I've never met you before. And uh, you live you live in Olympia? Yes. Yeah. I have been living here for a while. And, uh, for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I play in other groups, oh, other you? tips, other types of music. And uh, I joined the group about a year, a year and a half. And it's been a really interesting experience. I, I like the idea that we're not just doing one thing, but trying to combine so many different styles and rhythms and uh, mix not just the music, but uh, have a little bit of awareness of where the music come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna go into detail uh, about that here sh uh, shortly. Well, let me stop here. You are the director and- uh, I am the director, yes. Mm -hmm. Explain the term director to the friends. I don't know what that means. The term director means you're responsible for 50 things. <laughs> right and bad. <laughs> Not just one thing, uh -huh. but 50 things. You know, from getting the people, um, coming up with the music. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have uh, a lot of our uh, people in, in our band. Some of them do create the rhythms for the band. Mm -hmm. The majority of them are created by me, and um, I do everything from booking the band, to marketing the band, to setting up different types of shows, and doing also doing stage directing. Mm -hmm. So that's my department. Yeah. Well, you see, we, we are all from somewhere else today, which makes it really versatile, and I like it shows with, you know, different different people. Now, in Europe, a director would be a, a, a conductor, what we yeah. call a conductor. And, and here, a director is to lead the band. To lead the band, yes. Mm -hmm. And you are originally from? Uh, from Guatemala. Guatemala. Mm -hmm. And you? I'm from here either. Bombay, India. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we talk about this on the show very often. That, uh, when we come into this life, sometimes some things are predestined. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you feel the same way? I feel pretty similar. Yeah. Do you, do you ever wonder how we all ended up in Olympia, Washington, out of all places? <laughs> huh? Actually, I was taken out uh, uh, from Walla Walla. I came here about four, five, five years ago. I came here. Was it your own idea, or were you kind of maneuvered here? <laughs> I was just forced to come here. I for, actually, yeah. yeah, I joined a band. I auditioned for a band in Walla Walla. Then mm -hmm. uh, I passed the audition, and the next day, it was not a week or a month. It was the next day I left mm -hmm. because I was looking for any kind of ticket to get out of a small town to come mm -hmm. to Olympia. And I actually fell in love with Olympia after a couple of years being here. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with this. A lot of people here. You know, a lot from, of people, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you had free choice coming here? Or? Uh, school brought me here. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I originally grew up in California, in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. But I, after finishing junior college, I, I applied to Evergreen. Mm -hmm. And I came to, to, that was the first time I came to Olympia. I'd never been to Washington before then. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went through Evergreen, and um, I, soon after I came here, I decided I didn't want to go back to California. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful area, and there's a lot of talent here. There's a lot of people Absolutely, with uh, yeah. much creativity. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's a search, and meeting people, meeting Jay was actually, uh, as you speak of, uh, some things are predestined. Mm -hmm. We met uh, the first time um, at a drum circle. Yeah, drum circle. Yeah. Conducted by another friend of ours, uh, Scott Sanders, invited us to come on a on a whim, and we met there, and uh, we have been friends ever since. And that was about three years ago. Yeah. 
uh, no, I, one of our sponsors, uh, Traditions, uh, they have a vast majority of, you know, the people that they bring in. Did, did you come to Traditions or what are the other establishments? We, uh, we have played uh, quite a few shows from Traditions. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's one of our main, main show, uh, areas that we play with Traditions. They've always been real supportive. Of always been supportive. They've yeah. been just, really, really supportive you know, really of us. We need to say some things yeah. about them. They're always there when we need them. Always there. Mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful, beautiful setting. Nice. Actually, it's more of us when we're playing that. It's, so, it's such a culture with all the mm -hmm. different arts he has and the crafts. It's a wonderful place to play. Yeah. A wonderful copy, too. <laughs> Now, let's give a little background on, let me back up a little bit. Uh, it, it's not very many people that's familiar with the type of music uh, that's happening here. And so I would like to explain to the, to the friends what it is, how you arrived at it, and make them, make them familiar with the type of music um, other than if you say it's world beat, because yeah. it's really more than world beat. So, uh, you want either one of you here? Well, the, the original idea that brought me to this group was the, the, the intention of trying to combine different styles of music and trying to um, not just borrow the music but bring the culture part of the music mm -hmm. uh, into it. And uh, for instance, trying to play um, steel drums mm -hmm. with uh, congas, with uh, timbales, with uh, djembes. Mm -hmm. uh, to me personally, all those ins individual instruments represent their cultures, mm -hmm. their people. And uh, without getting too uh, political about it, those instruments represent the people, the culture. And we bring them together, we're trying to make a statement about uniting the world. Mm -hmm. And we try to represent them the best way possible. I mean, we all play different instruments. And when uh, the whole group comes together, mm -hmm. we're bringing those instruments together. It's a beautiful combination of things that you don't need to speak about them by just trying to portray them in a creative way. Mm -hmm. And music, I mean, especially because most of the music is instrumental, basically. Mm -hmm. We don't have any lyrics. So basically, the instruments speak for themselves. Speak for themselves. Now, now, Jay and I was visiting, and uh, um, originally, I was going to wear something else. Yeah. <laughs> and go with the flow. It didn't turn out like that. And, and that's because uh, my T-shirt got away from me. Oops. Uh, do you remember what I told you about the T-shirt? It showed, and I, actually, I've, I love that T-shirt. I'm thinking mm -hmm. about using it because it had, it had a shape. It's like a flag, but it has a, a, a kind of earth in the middle. Mm -hmm. and it had like a heart, but really, really unique, unique. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to do, you know, in playing percussion band. That's, in fact, that's what we represent is different cultures coming in. Now, uh, the T-shirt the uh, was uh, created after 9-11, where some of the, the light worker, the spiritual mm -hmm. people of the world, um, what we did is we thought, well, you know, we have these political borders and everybody's doing something different. Why don't we just consider ourselves the people of the planet Earth? Yeah. And that's how that came about. And there's no copyright on it, so yeah. hopefully everybody... Don't be surprised if I use it. <laughs> uh, just wonderful. But, you know, you can go uh, to a different part of the country and, and they wave at you because they know what your statement is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, going back to our to our music, I mean, people really want to understand. We, I mean, just besides com uh, combining different cultures into our music, but we also combine different instruments. Mm -hmm. So we're a totally different type of a band uh, because we use a variety of different instruments to uh, doing a variety of different cultures and sounds. Mm -hmm. For instance, none of our music has sequencing. Mm -hmm. So if it's not done on percussion, we don't use it. Uh, going from our the thunder, um, uh, your typical mother nature sounds from the rain to the thunder to the winds, even the ocean drums. It's all done on drums and playing even mellow, mellow music on drums. All percussions do. One of the things that impressed me was that uh, you have uh, you don't discriminate age wise either. No, um, no, we don't. That was big for me. This this project, the Plant Percussion Band, when I had a vision for it. It allows everybody to come in, mm -hmm. to be part of a huge, huge band, and to be part of a professional band. So, and we're not an amateur band, we're professional. So we do quite a bit of shows. So people with no experience, people with all age, different gender, different race, 
It's one night a week they can come to a band and be acceptable. And everybody treat each other like family. So it's a very, very spirited band. Um, and they, you do everything what a professional band does. You play a lot of shows. You, you are even are in the studio making a CD. So you get the opportunity of a lifetime to know, learn about them. not just the instruments, but to work in a group setting to be how to be professional on stage and also to be in a studio. I know you have ch you have at least one son that I know of. Do you have more children? You just have one son? No, I have no son. You have no son? No, I have no children. I don't know why I thought that. Do you have children? No. No. Okay, let's pretend. <laughs> let's let's pretend you do have children. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you encourage your children to be? Mm. Well, it's funny that you ask that because uh, one of my um, personal projects has been to, uh, to write a, a diary. Oh. So um, this is all uh, for this futuristic son of mine. Uh, the idea that I write in this diary uh, notes to my future son. So I tell him about what I do. I'm actually speaking uh, to this future son. And uh, all the ideas in there actually are what, what we basically what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, the idea of being able to live your life intentionally, that what you believe and what you think is proper and, and, and respectful of uh, life, nature, your fellow human beings, uh, should be practiced on a daily basis. And um, it gets emulated through, through our music, through the idea of um, not segregating people the idea that uh, music is not something that you just uh, appropriate, but you actually honor where it comes from and try to re treat it with respect. And, and the idea, and the group itself, talking about planet percussion, is that you're right. I mean, we have uh, members that are really young, and we have members that are really old, and we have members of uh, quite a few different ethnic groups and, and racial groups. And in the group, we make no comparisons, no, no we don't segregate, and we invite people to just try to be and uh, avoid trying to become a subculture group. So we don't. This is not a, a clique where only a specific people come in. We just open to anybody who's willing to learn, and that's basically what we are trying to do. It's a progressive experience of learning. So let me put that to you very similar in your own personal evolution. Where, at what time did this come in? In, in how far on that ladder, on your spiritual evolution, are you with your music? Mm. Well, this actually we, we started what, '98. Mm -hmm. No, I'm asking you. Oh. Uh, oh. If I get the band for a minute, and oh. for, as a person. For me, it started when I was the day I was born. Oh. You know, playing yeah. back in my homeland, back in India. Mm -hmm. We didn't have instruments back in then, uh, mm -hmm. coming from an orphanage. So I actually was turning down, when I was three years old, just turning pots and pans upside down and just playing on it. So I knew I had my calling in life. And when I came to America, actually, my foster parents pursued me because they saw the talent I had. wonderful, yeah. So they bought me my first conga. And ever since, uh, I fell in love with the music without even hearing uh, any other American music or I wasn't even introduced to music even in India. It's something that's just part of me that comes out. So they you know, pursued my interests and I you know, this. But as far as my son, if I had a son, hmm. you know, I would say, you know, follow your heart. That's follow what I did. Yeah. And, uh, but don't ever look at people from the outside. View them from the inside. From the inside, yeah. See the goodness of everybody and just follow your heart. You know, that's interesting. That, that's how you put that. I, I interviewed a George Lehue, that is a local um, artist also. And then he was talking about some of his early years. You know, he's pretty, pretty um, uh, successful and famous now. But he said when he used to date, um, you know, he, and he writes poetry and he, he writes music and does all these wonderful things. And then he said then he talks to the girl and the, the, the father sits there and says, well, that's all fine and dandy, son. Now, what do you what do you really do? Mm -hmm. Do you ever run into a? Yeah, I 
Uh, can, can we change the consciousness of that a little bit? Because I know you guys work hard. <laughs> you want to answer that? You want to answer that, yeah? It's, it, it's difficult to really um, walk your own path. I think it is. We, we have a, a, a very uh, definite structure of, of way of looking at people and, 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 and what they do for a living. Mm -hmm. um, in a couple of instances, um, if I were to say that I'm a musician, that is not considered to be high in our society standards. So yeah. I decided personally to say, you know, I'm an artist. And uh, I used to, my, my first instrument is the guitar. Mm -hmm. So I, I basically play classical guitar. And I play in other bands, but, mm -hmm. uh, but when I said that I'm a guitar player or a musician, it's, it's, uh, it, it's not really looked into as being really good. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to expand and progress on my musical abilities, I decided, okay, leave the guitar for, aside for a while and just broaden your, your, my horizons, so mm -hmm. to speak. And um, I'm trying to just teach that what you do, what you are, uh, is an evolution and it happens every day. It is, yeah. um, it's, it's difficult to really set standards on, on on fame, but you have to really be able to keep uh, aware that it's an evolution. You keep changing every day. Now, the, the lady that you were looking at, her name is Marie? Maria. Maria, uh, the, the dancer. We look, we're looking at her doing her dance. Uh, she's, she's from somewhere else, too. From she's from South Vietnam. From South Vietnam? Yeah. She's been in Olympia four years. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, uh, she couldn't come today because we would have really liked to have mm -hmm. her come. And then uh, one of the other ladies got ill, uh, and so we tried yeah. to get a little background on the variety of the people. Well, Valerie, my uh, one of the head dancers, mm -hmm. Valerie Mayo. She was the lady in the opening shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's been in Olympia for three years, mm -hmm. and uh, she's originally from Illinois. Mm -hmm. And Valerie has done wonderful, wonderful job with, our, uh, with the dance groups, you know, always in... She's been just inspiring us. I mean, mm -hmm. when we see the dancing, the dancing ex expires us, mm -hmm. and the music expires them. So it's, it's both. It's give and take to us. Um, Valerie has done a wonderful, wonderful job with us. You know, I'm sure there'll be more and more of her mm -hmm. as we come. You know. Maybe you can clarify something for me. We had a we had a, a, a band playing percussion one time, and they explained that they play. The dancer sets the pace, and mm -hmm. they play to the dancer. Is, is, did I hear that correct? Uh, uh, so. Usually, when you go dancing, you listen to the music, and you yeah. just you're dancing to the to the music. That's, yeah. <laughs> and what I thought he said was that in percussion and dancing, that uh, that the band adjusts to the dancer. Is, is that correct? Well, it could be correct to a point, but the majority of the time, usually the dancers will. He, along with the music, mm -hmm. it was on set the, the music will set the tempo of the dancers uh, for the dancing. Uh, or maybe they were doing improv and just made some it Some of them are on improv, but I think most of them are just choreographed numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but like with Maria here doing the Middle Eastern, she did, that's more choreographed to the music. Mm -hmm. So it was not something that she danced and we came up with the music. Mm -hmm. It was the music, then she came up with a dance routine for it. So. Well, okay, which brings me to another subject. I mean, if, if it's all, you know, the, the way you say, uh, there must be a tremendous amount of rehearsals going on. Rehear yeah, our rehearsals are very, very tense. So. Mm -hmm. um, we rehearse every week. Every, every week, week, yeah. Every Monday we rehearse. Yeah. I understand you have, um, like you, earlier you said, you have, you have some some new techniques or new instruments, because you invent your own instruments. We actually, the only instrument we invented was the, uh, the wind wad. Uh, well, actually, a friend of mine made uh, several of them for us. Mm -hmm. But uh, the wind wads. Oh, here. Oh. Uh, maybe you can demonstrate that for me. Right. This is the Australian wind wad. And what I meant uh, when I said that we use nothing but percussion instrument, even the sound of the wind. So this actually came from Australia. And this is how you play it. <laughs> and when you get really fast, you know, you can get a really yeah, high, high yeah, pitch and yeah, you can, you can change it. the pitch to the sound just by moving the stick. 
I'll put it back over here. Uh, I don't know how far along in the program we are, but uh, I, you had promised that you would do a uh, live performance for us. Sure. And, um, but I watched one of your shows, and uh, in there you said that you were just, didn't know what to do one night, and you had a broomstick. That's the story I'm after. Oh. So you are inventing your own. We are, well, yes, every music, in our show, we invent our, uh, on our show on our own. So there's no, we don't copy anybody else's music. So everything we create is our, on our own. So it's your own, no? Yeah, it is yeah, on so. our own. And that's the story you told. You just had a, had a broomstick one night and just then. Now you have a whole act with, what do you call them? And that's called rhythm stick. Rhythm stick. You know, and it's, it's, it's really, this, see, I mean, we are, I mean, just a percussion band, but we're also entertainment. Mm -hmm. We love to entertain. So, you know, my, you know, the band's creative idea comes from me, so it's like, you know, I'm, I might be bored one night, take some spoons out, and I might introduce it to the gang. They might like it or not, you know, they, they'll let me know if they like it. Or, but I, I was fortunate, everything I introduced to them, they seemed to like. Now, in, in the studio we have, uh, in the studio we have what is called an ocean drum. This is ocean drum. Uh, and uh, maybe, maybe we can show that for a minute, and it has pebbles in it. This has this, uh, BB pellets in it. BB pebbles, yeah. And then the, the lady, what's mm -hmm. her name? She, she uh, Lisa Haskell. Lisa Haskell, and she'll stand there and, and she'll just she played like that, and it's just for wonderful. And then uh, next to you, and that's what you're going to use for the um, live performance you're going to do for us yeah. any anytime you're ready here. And Actually, I'm going to play the hung drum. The hung, that's the one. Can we explain that one there yeah. for a minute? Yeah, she can want to get that. This is the hung, this is one of the instruments that we feature in our band, like today. In our band, the final percussion, we have the most unique and most weirdest instrument. This is not a space saucer. This is called a hung drum. This is actually from Switzerland. It's actually three drums and one. It's got a steel. And in the middle of the drum, it's, just, it's got a little gong in it. And of course on the back, you got more of a uh, clay or some people call it voodoo drum. Mm -hmm. It's from Peru, no? Yeah. So it's basically, like I said, it's a two-man drum. Once mm -hmm. uh, one person can be playing on this side, the other person can be playing, and it does not affect each other's rhythm. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the instruments I want to feature tonight. Uh, we're going to do a performance on it. Yeah, that, that would be nice. Anytime you're ready, if, now you have a mic on, so don't hang yourself. Yeah. How far do you have to move? I gotta move way over there. Gotta move way, way over there. So, well, that's okay. We'll try to do, if that's okay, we can try to do that. And maybe you could um, play some for us. And uh, can, can we set up for it? And, well, yeah. you don't have a mic on anymore. Uh, you, you are still mic. Would you set up for what are you playing? What is it called? Well, I'm gonna be playing in the cajon. Cajon is this instrument I'm sitting on it. Oh, you're sitting on the yeah, instrument. Yeah, I'm sitting yeah. on my instrument. And this is actually originally from South America. Mm -hmm. And uh, it actually emulates a, a drum, but it has many different uh, features on this. It has, it has a different sound depending on where you play on it. Mm -hmm. So today I'm gonna play it this side. And it's basically, uh, uh, it's from the Afro, Peruvian mm -hmm. culture, and the slaves ended up actually using this a lot. Mm -hmm. At some point in time, they weren't allowed to play drums, so they ended up inventing ways and they used anything possible Playing something to just else. play the music. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is. Well, okay. So, so if 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 we ready in anywhere, would you be nice enough to to, to go ahead and play some for us? Isn't this cool? It's just so amazing. We just have these wonderful people fall out the sky for us all, all the time. Mm
That was really cool. So I'm going to have to come back over here. Now, while I'm hooking him back up, could you tell me if you change? You see, I need to come this way a little bit. If you change, wait, does it change the sound of your drum? Um, I think the, 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 the good thing about this instrument, it has so much different variations. Mm -hmm. and. Um, One thing I learned about this is that if I actually tilt the drum on its side, mm -hmm. almost, then there is more resonance. Mm -hmm. So I basically, if I, if I sit in a certain way, I can get more sound out of it. It's like a talking drum you're sitting on, huh? Mm-hmm. Get it? Yeah. And these are built to sit on, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's very convenient. You can sit on it, and that's basically one of the good things about this. The original uh, players that play these sit on them. And, uh, they are different sizes, so the tone varies depending on the size of the instrument. Now, if, if uh, I, I know I'm going to get some phone calls, uh, some people asking, well, can we, uh, can you teach us? Can you teach, can yes. you teach us? Well, that's the beauty of playing percussion band. You, mm -hmm. you will, you learn everything. You can come in this band with no experience, no musical experience or no musical background, and month, two months, three months down the road, all of a sudden you're playing not just one instrument, but you have a knowledge mm -hmm. of a variety of different instruments. And everybody in the band rotates to different instruments, so you never learn one instrument. You learn everything, mm -hmm. all the instruments. So yes, you will learn. Oh, you got to rotate. Oh, you got to rotate, too. That, there goes that. I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I will stop in. I want to get back to your notes there for a minute uh, that you're writing for the future. And I'm writing a book right now. It's called Remembering Your Future. <laughs> so I. This is really wonderful because sometimes when we work with people and then they are in our circle, somewhere along the line, it turns out they have either been together or they will in the future. Um, have any thoughts on that? Hmm. Let me think about that one. Well, I'm okay. going to have she go here. For the most part, I think we only remember the negative things. And, uh, and, and because of what we experience, but by what happens in our daily lives, there is too much negativity around. Mm -hmm. And uh, at least my idea of, of writing mem my memoirs to my future son or daughter mm -hmm. was the idea of, uh, of explaining which were the things that I really enjoy, even in the midst of so much chaos and so much negativity and so much uh, destruction. Uh, there's a lot of good things to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, well, I'm exposed to, to everything that happens around me, and I cannot avoid it. But I try to concentrate on the positive things. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a optimistic by nature. If anything, I think uh, I'm trying to battle my pessimism. And music is probably the best medicine I've found so far. Uh, um, it makes me really uh, 
give in to the to to the process of uh, of music and my prior experience before planet percussion was uh, improvisational music so i try to bring that into what we do and, and be open to to the moment and i think that's one of the things that if anything i want to pass on to my future offsprings are the idea that we need to learn from the past so we don't make the same mistakes but at the same Absolutely. time dwelling in the future robs you from really experiencing the now and that's basically what i've been learning through all this uh, music experience i'm going to rephrase the question for you here uh, this is the year 2002. Mm -hmm. On an evolutionary staircase here, where do you see yourself five years from now? Well, I'll still be performing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think possibly playing percussion band would be around for that long. But me, I always would be grown. Yeah, I, mean, yeah I was going to ask you on, on a personal because we're going to talk about the, the plan for custom here in a minute. But you as a person. Me as a person, I would still be growing. Uh, mm -hmm. Still be getting a lot of knowledge, accepting things I don't know that I'm not nothing about. Um, but even five, ten years from now, you know, I'm still. I don't know, that would be, that'd be a hard question to, you know, just answer that one. Well, okay. What would I see myself, you know? Well, well, okay, I'll give, you, uh, I'll give you a break here. I'm going to put you in charge of the world for five minutes and let you think about it. Uh, what are you going to do? Well, I, I, I aspire to actually st uh, stay focused to grow. Mm -hmm. The idea of, of learning and goes hand in hand with uh, realizing that changes happen. But you're in charge now. Well, so, so you're the decision maker here. In my ideal world, I think I will simplify things, ah, and that's what I—that's what I've been trying to accomplish. Just simplify life, uh, my life, as much as possible, and concentrate on what I consider to be essential. Music is very important to me. It's medicine, and I treat it with, re with respect. Um, so much so that I don't—I don't expose my instruments to to the weather. To I don't mistreat the instrument. To me, it's really important to just. It's, it's what gives the vehicle, is my bridge to creativity. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, next to uh, learning how to sing, that's another goal that I have. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm pretty uh, confident about how much I've grown as a musician, you know, as an artist, but I still have a lot to learn. And it's, it's, it's encouraging, actually, that I think um, with any hope and luck, will be performing much more heavily and experiencing um, joy. Okay, that now you're in charge uh, of the world now, the whole world. The whole world, I'm in charge. Yeah. Well, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's planet. So well, I see five, you know. five minutes, that's all you got. <laughs> charge of the world in five minutes. Yeah. You know, I, I try to focus on my music and what I love doing, you know, mm -hmm. I'm always going to grow as a musician and and that is my secret, that's my house, that's my, uh, it's my everything, temple. it's my parent, it's yeah. my temple, um, I mean I always had, you know, I had my good and bad days in the past, but it's like mm -hmm. the music has always brought my spirit back in, um, there's always, you know, the, you can always go into a room just one night, just, or even find an ocean, just sit there and play that drum, and, yeah. and this music is really, very healing, and I think that's what it was that brought me such a passion to music mm -hmm. is a healing thing and it's it's representing you know many different things many different cultures but uh as far as me personally um, music is very much a healing to me mm -hmm. it's my strength so um, it's my security almost so um one of the other things is, uh, like I, we had touched on that earlier, is, uh, is, is a lot of people that have never heard of this type of music before. And correct me if I'm wrong, um, I understand you're the only group that does this, is that correct? We are the original, original. I mean, there's drum bands out there. Mm -hmm. I've seen drums band many, many years. But nothing that's like us. Mm -hmm. We take and we challenge uh, 
this, uh, a lot of these uh, uh, musicians that said that it cannot be done. My vision, actually my five years ago when I first started this, and, and a lot of people did deny my vision, that it, it cannot happen. Mm -hmm. And Harris, two years later, I'm proving them wrong that, you know, we are the most original, original. I mean, there's percussion bands out there, but nothing that you, uh, you can take an ocean drum sound or like a hung drum sound or Australian wind rod, and we even create our own thunder mm -hmm. using metal sheets. So, so that what makes it so original. That, mm -hmm. And there's no any other instruments but all percussion instruments. Uh, supposing somebody was to try and get you to come to the city because the show goes other places, how much time would you suggest they give you before they say, can you be here in so many days? Well, when I book, I book four months. Four months. Four months. You know, to get 25 people together. And mm -hmm. So yeah, I do about four months notice. Yeah, well, that'll be good too. That's going to be one of the questions that they call. They say, well, they're wonderful. How yeah. soon can they get here? Well, uh, four months, and um, so like I said, when you're looking at that many people to rotate around, and most of you have um, some of the bands, they have other jobs. In other fact, jobs. they all have jobs, all have me jobs. and him. Well, me, mm -hmm. but he does. <laughs> but, you know, that's almost easier because when you do this, you work all the time. So wouldn't it be nice to, to go to work and uh, then be done? Well, you know, <laughs> I tried my eight-hour day job, nothing against eight hours, but you know, but I'd rather do something that I love doing, yeah. that when I go to work, I'm excited to go to work. Yeah. Uh, it's a just going to work and just, you don't want to be there for eight hours a day. So. There's a very few people that uh, get to work, but their passion and their job is yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Hmm. So I take it you wouldn't trade this for? I wouldn't trade this for anyone. And I had my days of nine to five work, so. Mm -hmm. But isn't you know. it wonderful when we can actually say that? Um, speaking of cultural differences now, the Aborigines of Australia do not have a word for work. Mm -hmm. Do you heard that? Because, you know, if it's not fun, they're just not going to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. But isn't that amazing? Yeah, so. Let's go to a different subject now, um, <coughs> because you use so many nature sounds and things. Uh, your timeline, do you work, do you play in real time or do you try to put dimensional things together? Well, the idea of uh, introducing different tones, mm -hmm. it's almost like looking at a, uh, at a picture that has depth, right. more dimensions to it. and. Um, we try to understand music by tones. They mm -hmm. use very high tones, very low tones, and they all have their space within a uh, collage of sounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a section that we call the toy section, basically handheld instruments. Like this instrument uh, emulates sounds from Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we try to put them in places that actually will give you another dimension of sound. Mm -hmm. And when those things come together, you see a really like multi-layer uh, piece, and that's what basically another way of interpreting uh, the idea of bringing different cultural uh, musics, because we're trying to mix the sounds and, and, and acknowledging that there are so many different ways of mixing sounds. Mm -hmm. Now, many, many years ago, someone took me to a Chinese ballet, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, I don't speak Chinese or anything like that, and, uh, and so I could close my eyes, mm. and I could almost tell by the music who, who, where was the dragon and, you know, where was the rest of it. And uh, I've heard some of your pieces, and I can close my eyes and paint a picture. Mm -hmm. So that's really great. You know? well, Ocean, like one of our good songs, I think, Ocean of Dreams, mm -hmm. uh, which just features the, uh, the ocean drum right there. It also features another unique in instrument that people are really fond of. It's the log drum. It's an actual, it's a real log. Mm -hmm. And then if you want more of the Caribbean, so we added the steel drum in there. Mm -hmm. And so adding all three instruments, and of course in the background we have rains and different instruments playing in the background. Mm -hmm. But you can actually close your eyes and you That's can right, always you see can. yourself mm -hmm. on, on the beach. 
Yeah. And people get fascinated that the, yeah. it's all done on drums. I mean, yeah. majority when you hear drum sounds or Mother Nature sounds, you usually will have a, a keyboard player that's playing. Right, yeah. But this is all done on instruments. All on instruments, And that's what yeah. people are fascinated by. And, and in case we do run out of time, uh, uh, the piece that we're going to close with, it's called Jam and Droids. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what went to your mind when you wrote that? Well, actually, uh, I went to Seattle uh, about two months ago, and I found this the hung drum. That's the instrument that we're going to be oh, featuring. Is that recent? Yeah, it'll oh, be that I thought instrument. you had it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, this this recent one. And uh, I really fell in love with the instrument. And uh, so two of the members of our band, Jeff mm -hmm. uh, Parkers and Carol Langston, so they brought the drum in. Mm -hmm. They brought it before me, and I was frustrated because they got it before me. <laughs> yeah. And so the three of us kind of sat together. They were just kind of playing one night, and Lori and I, we kind of messed around with different... So the four of us kind of wrote this tune. It's called The mm -hmm. Jam and Druid, using two different hung drums. Mm -hmm. So where well, they play on one, and I, I play on the others. And um, So I take it you got your own drum now? Oh, I got my own drum. I had to get my own <laughs> drum, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, really young children, I have a collection of drums at home, too. And in mm -hmm. fact, I finally got to show it to you. You have a talking drum yeah, I'm yeah. fascinated with. And, and, and I've never met you, but I want to tell you, and all the friends out here, I have a talking drum that has a stain on it. The first time I saw you play, and I thought, how did he get my drum? Because the stain is in the same place. You know? mm. so. Interesting. It was interesting, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so you provide some of the instruments, or you encourage everybody to come with their own? Uh, no, I provide all the instruments. Uh, some of the members, they bring their own little hand drum or their little uh, mm -hmm. toy gadget, but majority of all the main main instruments are owned by the Planet Percussion mm -hmm. and, of course, me. So. How much time is involved in rehearsal? Um, two or three hours? Oh, you said weekly? At least two hours, two two hours. on Monday nights. Well, yeah. We try to go for two hours, but people have such a good time even at it rehearsals. Gets away, it gets away so from it, you, yeah. we, Kind of sometimes we get all focused away, so when a director has a crack of whip, it's like, you know, we got to focus on this mm -hmm. tune, so. And, uh, I didn't ask, but do you have a web page? We have an email. We're, we're, email. we're working on a web page right now, but that'll be coming soon. There's any webmasters out here that try to give um, yeah. a Jay a hand, you know, speak up, oh, we got a hand already. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I, just the history on, on the instruments, it is just really fascinating for people that just don't know, yeah. um, you know, the depth of some of the things that you do. And people who get really fascinated by our shows, I mean, just just us setting up mm -hmm. tracks in a big, big crowd, because they see this band, I mean, not just the unique instruments, what tracks the crowd, but, you know, when we all step on the stage and they see the different age level, mm -hmm. I mean, you got a nine-year-old boy mm -hmm. compared to a, you know, 65 year old uh, man or a woman so it's like mm -hmm. and and they usually don't expect a good show because oh, they think that this is an amateur they're not gonna yeah. know you know they think it's gonna be all noise when they see drums but at the end of the show i didn't want to say that i'm glad uh, i was trying to uh, my mind was thinking how am i going to bring that into it because some people think drums are noise yes so i'm glad you brought it to the table here they think you know you know, when they, when they see a group of drummers, I mean, there's some people who are into uh, percussion or into music who will love that. But there's some others, uh, like the good example, the farmer's market. They didn't want a drum band because they think that it's so loud. loud and, you know, and But yeah. we came in there with unique instruments and unique sounds, and, and also at the same time, a, a show. Mm -hmm. The market just loved us. You know, they wanted us to come back, you know, so many times this year, but we we're so overbooked. But people get fascinated. They think it's like, guy, it's not headache music. Yeah. It's very interesting and very knowledgeable music. So if, if you go to town and you see people with faint pa uh, paint f painted faces yeah. and beaks on top of their head, <laughs> it's Jay and the band, you just follow them and, and you'll, you'll, you'll find them. And I, understand, I think, I would think you don't use uh, mic microphones at all, do you? We use microphones. Yeah. Do you? A lot of our instruments need to require microphones, so, especially when we do an outdoor show. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a big setup. Well, time flies, you know. I just got a wind up sign <laughs> here. So thank you for coming. Thank you. And uh, keep up the really good work. It's very nice meeting you. Thank and you. Uh, come see us next week. Uh, and stop when you hear drums, just stop and ask people why do you do what you do. And thank you for sharing time and space with us. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.
Yeah, we're gonna hear Detroit. Detroit. German Detroit. Detroit. This, yeah. German Detroit for the closing, yeah. Really excited about that. Yeah. called cajones, which is a Spanish word for box. 